Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm trying some more 009 rolling stock by Backman. The only 009 wagons that I've looked at so far were the Backman Dinorwick slate wagons. And each of these wagons was absolutely lovely. They were well built and well detailed, but they were very, very small and there wasn't a lot to them really. But the thing about narrow gauges, just because the gauge of the track is narrow, doesn't necessarily mean that all of the rolling stock has to be small and lightweight. In some cases, narrow gauge rolling stock was as large as standard gauge rolling stock, or at the very least as long. So today I've decided I want to try something a bit more substantial in narrow gauge 009, and so I'm looking at this. This is also made by Backman and it's a covered goods wagon, which as you can see is so large that it actually has bogies. So this is an eight wheel wagon. And I've tried to find out more information about this, but there's not very much out there about it. So I'm wondering whether this is a generic wagon by Backman. And I think that because they've produced this in a whole load of different liveries and they all seem to be kind of disconnected from each other. So if anyone's got more information on these in real life, please do let me know. Well, as you can see, this is in a, well, they call it a Southern Stone livery, uh, which I can kind of see, yeah, sort of stone colored, isn't it? And I really like the look of this. So at the full price, as most Backman models are, these are quite expensive at 38 pounds 95. So the best part of 40 quid, but quite a few of the retailers have got these on sale at the moment. For instance, at Rails, you can now pick this up at almost half price at £19.35, which is very reasonable. And in fact, a little while ago, I managed to pick this one up from the model centre for £16.23. They had a must have had a like a flash sale or something, I don't know, but that's an incredibly low price for a model that's usually more like 40. So what is this like? Is it going to be a £40 model? Is it going to be a £16 model? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to finding out. So larger 009 rolling stock, let's get started. And if you're interested in these, affiliate links down in the description. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so I'll be quite interested to give this a try actually, because it's obviously a bit more complicated than the sort of four wheel wagons that I've tried in the past in N-Gage and 009. How are the little bogies actually going to function on this? Will it be as reliable as the four wheelers? Interested to find out. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So the version I've gone for is 393-030. Like I say though, there's lots of others besides this one to choose from. It is the bogey covered goods wagon in the SR Stone livery. And with that, let's get this out and see exactly what you get. Um, obviously, it'll be quite interesting to see what the coupling situation is with this. And I think I've just answered the question there. Yeah, there's no additional couplings. So we're just using the hook and loop 009 style couplings this time. I suppose we only got the other options with the slate wagons because they were so tiny and these larger couplings just looks a bit silly on them. So I assume that's why. Um, so yeah, quite a bit simpler in that regard. Okay, well, let's see what this is like. Obviously, Backman, king of the paint job. So let's see what this one looks like finish wise. Hmm, quite a bone colored roof there. Sort of off white, if you like. That oh, looks good. Let's lift it up. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Fair amount of weight to this, actually, for a small wagon. And if I flip it upside down, ah, no sort of detail under here, but this whole sort of bottom section, the sole bar, if you like, is all metal. That is die cast. So there's a good amount of quality and also weight to this model. And yeah, as you can see, it's beautifully painted. I think you can also tell that it is gorgeously detailed. Quite a bit of complexity here, actually. I'm not convinced entirely that this is something I'd be paying 40 quid for. I think that's taking advantage a little bit, isn't it? Although I suppose they wouldn't be selling as many of these as they would a sort of double O scale fan. Um, but nevertheless, to those who do want it, Nah, 40 quid, a bit too much, and the fact that they were slashed to half price suggests that they probably weren't flying off the shelves as uh, they might have hoped. But uh, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous wagon, and for £16, 
perfectly happy with this. But anyway, let's delve in and take a much closer look. And this is a really beautiful wagon. Yes, it's a little bit pricey. Yes, potentially you could pay close to £40 for this, depending on where you bought it from. And no, I don't think this is worth that. Come on, that's a bit too much, isn't it? But I have to say it's very, very nicely presented. It's beautifully made, actually, as we're going to see. And I just don't get the impression that this was made as cheaply as possible to try and turn a quick book. I think some actual care and love and attention has been put into this model, which is great. First of all, the weight is amazing. It weighs in at 33 grams, which is really, really heavy. I mean, I've got double O wagons, the much larger Oxford Great Eastern van here. is about five grams lighter than it, and look how much taller it is. So the weight is amazing without, of course, being too ridiculously heavy that the 009 Locos won't be able to haul it. It's also very free rolling, which should help in that area too. I would demonstrate, but it's taken me ages to get it to stay in this position. And I think if I touch it, it's going to roll away, never to be seen again. But trust me, it is nice and free rolling. Let's take a look at the decoration then, which for such a small wagon is quite complex. So a few different colours used. We've got the black underframe, the very interesting stone coloured body, which is more of a, what do you call it, a sort of light tan or something. It's an unusual colour. And then, like I said earlier on, we've got the bone coloured roof, all painted very, very nice and precisely. We've got a fair bit of printed work, the SR lettering, very nicely done. Quite a few other prints on the side of the body, the letter N's, free cookie to anyone who can tell me what the letter N stands for, I'm not entirely sure myself. And then on the ends, we've got the little door handles, which are not actually separately fitted, but they're so well and precisely painted that you can't actually tell that from a distance. Let's take a closer look at the level of detail then. So I think the most amazing thing about this, or at least the thing that really caught my eye, is the bogies. Look how tiny these are. From a distance, these bogies are just a blur. But up close like this, you can see the springs, you can see the axle boxes, you can even see the, the brake shoes or blocks. Absolutely amazing. I mean, let me put my fingernail in front of them just to give you a sense of scale. Incredibly small bogies. And the interesting thing about the bogies is that these brake wheels are actually part of the bogies. This sort of veranda poking out the edge is not fixed. That will turn with the wagon, which I quite like. It's quite an interesting design. We do have these sort of struts underneath the wagon to give it some structural support. But like I noticed earlier on, no detail on the bottom. Now it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see this obviously while it's running, but for nearly 40 pounds at the full price, it would have been nice to have seen a bit of detail under here. Just because I just enjoy that, I find it really cool when a model is completely realistic on every side, but it's not a massive deal. The moulding on the side of the body looks fantastic. So all of the planking beautifully and crisply moulded. These doors look great. So I love the sort of cross bracing on the doors, all very nicely done. And these little handrails, these are separately fitted parts. So quite a complex model in terms of separate parts as well, because there's two of those on each side. The most amazing thing about this though, is that the doors are openable. So look at this, they slide open as the real things would. What a fine, fine feature that is. And of course, it's cool to play with. But more than that, this just gives modelers so many opportunities to do modeling. You know, you can imagine this in a siding with perhaps a member of the crew sitting in there with a sandwich or something. You obviously could put a load in there. You could model this being loaded at a depot or something like that. There's so, so much that you can do with this besides just open it and think, oh, that's cool. So we've got four doors because there's two on either side and then would you believe it the doors on the ends also are openable <laughs> so we've got six openable doors on this tiny little wagon absolutely amazing and the other awesome thing is in fact let me open up the side doors again we've got the realistic planking inside there as well which is impressive because like i say the wagon is very very heavy and yet they've not achieved that by having to fill the inside of the wagon with sort of weights. All of the weight is from the diecast metal sole bar here, which as you can see from this angle is pretty thin. It's quite amazing that this wagon weighs what it does over 30 grams. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Very, very impressed. 
It's not cheap, but I do think to an extent it is worth the money. And particularly now that these have been discounted, anything less than 20 quid is a flat out bargain, I think. Beautifully made, beautifully presented, and some pretty impressive details and features as well. But I can only finish this review as a glowing review if it performs properly. So with that, let's get it down onto the track. So here is today's test setup, and I think this is going to be the oddest 009 train that's ever been put together, and I've got them all bunched up like this just to try and make sure they're all on straights when they couple. So for the Loco, I've picked the Bagley Drury Diesel, which honestly I think is my favourite 009 Loco. It's certainly the best runner, yet to find one that's better than that. Then of course I've got the van from today's review and at the back the little slate wagons. Now I've just put these on for a bit of interest really. I'd like to know if the Bagley Drury can haul these as well as the heavy van, although honestly I think it will quite easily. Also look at the size difference between the slate wagons and the van that I'm looking at today. They're the same scale. It's just amazing how small the slate wagons are but like I've already said, this is a very free rolling van. I've not given myself much space to demo that. Uh, well, I've already coupled. All right, well, that was the coupling demo. Actually, that will work in my favor. I can back that up a bit. And then we can try with the Bagley Drury, which is cut out. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, I was just running her in as well, warming her up a bit. Hmm. Perhaps she needs the wheels cleaning. I was running her in at speed and she was fine. Uh, Perhaps uh, for the slow speed, you've got to clean the wheels a bit more often. I know that. You do need to. Um, okay. <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll clean the wheels now. Maybe I will. Okay. Jump cut. Okay. Take two. It's time to couple the Bagley Drury up to the van. I sure hope it doesn't cut out. It's cut out. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, okay, well, it's it's doing better now, definitely. Quite amazing what a wheel clean can do. There we go. So, yeah, couplings, absolutely perfect. Not a lot that can go wrong with these couplings, of course, but, uh, yeah, they have just coupled faultlessly. Okay, let's try it around the track, then. Here we go. Yeah, that's it. Bagley Drury running quite a bit better now. Well, there we go. And I have to say the bogey van here does look a lot better with the Bagley Drury. I know the slate wagons are in scale with it, but somehow the van just looks a bit more realistic. When it was just hauling the slate wagons on their own, it looked like it was hauling wagons from a smaller scale. Uh, it's just the way it looks. Obviously, I know that's not the case. Yeah, the van looks great with it. I'd love to get a few more, actually. That would look really, really good. But as you can see, no issues whatsoever. It's actually remarkable how smooth that van is. There's obviously not too much tolerance in the bogies because it's not wobbling all over the place. And that weight obviously means that it's grounded to the track really, really nicely. Stable as you like. Or is it? I suppose to find out for sure, I should put this over the points. Right, opening up the points. Hopefully it will be okay. There forwards no problem let's try it in reverse similar sort of speed yeah it's amazing really really amazing how reliable all this 009 stuff is yeah it's great I, don't, I still haven't found anything in 009 that derails on points and there's a lot of it in 00 scale standard gauge it's all rock solid in this scale, which is just uh, surprising, isn't it? Very, very good. So, perfect performance. I can't think of any way to fault it. Really, really good. So, with that, let's have some ratings. So, as you can see, this is getting a very, very good score indeed. Level of detail, I've given a nearly perfect 4.5 star. So paintwork, absolutely spotless, no way to fault this. Every little print, perfectly crisp, very well done. Loads of molded detail on this. The planking all looks great. We've got little tiny separately fitted wire handrails, really good quality. 
the bogies are just astonishing can't believe the fidelity and the molding on those bogies so that was great the only thing stopping it from getting a perfect five star is the lack of underframe detail i think when some models these days have masses of underframe detail it would be a bit unfair to give this five when it doesn't so 4.5 very very detailed oh and i didn't even mention the opening doors amazing feature there's so many double o vans that don't have that feature it's not necessary but it's a lot of fun and it makes modelers think oh what can i do with that it inspires creativity which is great performance though five star no way to fault this whatsoever it's good and heavy so it's stable on the track perfect performance over curves and points i can't fault it perfect couplings it's just great five star quality five star for such a tiny slender van with a fully accessible interior which isn't compromised by weights and stuff it weighs an absolute ton really really heavy brilliantly built lots of separate parts but no visible glue no hiccups in the decoration no warping nothing just a really high quality wagon five star value for money then so for nearly 40 pounds 38 pounds 95 as an rrp I think this is a bit too expensive yes it's very well made but that's kind of a similar price to the rapido lomac in double o which came with a load it's obviously much larger and heavier it had sprung buffers quite a bit more to that wagon for a similar sort of price yeah i don't think this is quite as good a value model as that but i paid 16 pounds 23 which is obviously a bargain that would be five so i've split the difference giving it three star on value could have been better but the model you get is excellent Overall then, that is 8.43 out of 10, or a grade of B. Yeah, very well deserved. And into the logbook it goes, where it is fourth place, above the Hornby TTA, and below EFE Rail's Bloater Fish Van. If you're interested in 009 and you haven't already got one of these, I would highly recommend it. Probably the best piece of 009 rolling stock I've looked at so far although I haven't really experienced that much, so take that with a pinch of salt. But yeah, this makes me very excited to try what else Backman has in store. All right then, folks. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. That was awesome. Really enjoyed this van. And it seems that everything Backman does in 009 is just amazing. The biggest fault I would have with any of it is the pricing. Everything else, the way it all looks, the way it all works just perfectly, the cleverness of the designs, everything else but the prices is just superb. And, you know, when things come in the sale, as they often do, even the prices become reasonable. So I love 009, love these models. They are great fun to run and own. So thank you so much for watching. Comment down below, let me know what you think. And if you'd like to try one of these vans or browse the range of what's available, I do have affiliate links down in the description for you. But for now, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next review. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.